Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Sega 32X. This is absolutely one of those cases that Sega does, but Nintendo don't. I just wanted to talk about the Sega 32X. I recently purchased one. I wanted to have it for the collection, but is it actually like good having it in the collection? Like I still remember the video of Angry Video Game Nerd that basically like had a bow and arrow and shoot at this freaking thing. And I can understand why a lot of people maybe hate this 32X add-on. It was so flawed in many ways, it had so many freaking issues, but it was something else that was pretty damn messed up. When you're looking at the Sega 32X, and the idea behind it, I think it's not a bad idea. Like that you can basically upgrade your existing system and play more games with better graphics. So the idea behind it is pretty damn awesome. But if you think about it, that the Sega 32X was released back in the day, almost at the same time that the Sega Saturn was going to launch. So that is, in my opinion, quite a messed up situation. I watched a lot of history videos about the Sega 32X because I'm just gonna be honest, I still find it a fascinating piece of technology. And that is one of the reasons I just wanted to review it and check it out here on the channel and show you and give you my opinion about this piece of technology. Because when you think about it, like, how it looks let's be honest like this thing let me know in the comments what you think how the, this thing looks because it looks kind of weird it's like a freaking mushroom growing out of my freaking sega mega drive or genesis as people know it but let's take a close look at the functionalities and what can we do with it so one of the things that we're going to need is of course freaking two power adapters yep we're going to need those one for the system itself and one for the 2x like it's quite interesting and you know it's going to be even messier when you're going to get a cd add-on because you're going to need freaking three power supplies for your machine yeah think of what a nightmare that was back in the day but let's talk about the configuration how you need to set it up so first of all what we needed to do is we're going to need a cable so this cable is going to be connecting the system itself with the Sega 32X and with the Sega 32X we're going to get the output and that goes to the television. But if you're thinking getting a Sega 32X take consideration is that there are some things you need to know. First of all you need to have like the link cable. A lot of like sellers forget to sell this or just don't have it at all so you need to get it separately. Then we need to have the adapter if you want to use it on the Mega Drive 2 and at the back we're going to get the original power supply but of course you can use enough to park it but regarding the power supply let's talk about about that okay so here we're going to get ourselves a special made power supply this power supply does have the option to use the tower of power and we're going to get three connections take consideration here you can see it, it uses an adapter it has different reasons one of them can be is that we're going to get different connections when it comes to yeah systems like the mega drive one and two but it's very convenient they are like high quality and i'm using this for a very long time now and i'm very satisfied so it's super easy, plug and play only with one block and we can order this in your region with everything that you're going to need. Or you can just unplug this bad boy. In the end, I think this is the ultimate solution if you ask me. Yep, yeah. Okay, so let's configure this with the two Mega Drives and I will show you why you're going to need this plastic fantastic piece. Okay, so what you can see over here that we're going to get a lot of space between the adapter and the original system and that is the reason why we're going to need the plastic. But if you want to use the tower of power configuration here you can see this thing fits in perfectly it will like give some scratches to your system so that's a little bit of a problem but yeah mine is already scratched up so that is not a big of a deal if you ask me but here you can see like it sits in perfectly still i wonder like where does the sega 32 x basically look the best on is it a mega drive one or mega drive two so still it looks like a weird mushroom popping out of my mega drive two and with the mega drive one it does look better but the shape it's more designed when it comes to let's say the mega drive two so there we're going to get an issue if you're looking at the design wise it looks kind of weird so personally in the end i prefer to have it on my mega drive one and create the real power of tower the sega 90 style so for the people who didn't know, like retro is getting really expensive because it's rare and a lot of people want to have it. But here we're going to get the biggest issue. So Sega 32X, especially the PAL, they didn't release a lot of games. So every single freaking game I found in PAL is going to be freaking expensive. I looked it up on eBay, checking out some US or Japanese version, and they are like way cheaper. But it's not really convenient. So maybe in the future we'll upgrade it to a different region system because it's absolutely crazy. We're going to take a close look at Doom, one of my favorite shooters. And this version is quite good. It's not, of course, PC perfect. Then we're going to take a close look at the Virtual Racing Deluxe. I think it's a pretty 
pretty good version. So it's not perfect, of course, but it's getting really close to the Sega Saturn. It's still very interesting to see like how good this thing was on the 32X. Then we go to get the Motocross. It was not the best racing game, but just wanted to pick it up. And yeah, the previous owner, he completely messed up the label of the Star Wars. I'm like, what were they thinking back in the day? But the Star Wars arcade game, also going to try that one. So that is the games that we're going to test out today. Like other games like Sonic Chaotix, I will never buy them because they are like super expensive. Even cartridge only, they add like hundreds, hundreds of different prices. But in the end, you need to pay all kinds of crazy prices. And I'm not going to do that. I'm happy for what I'm having here. And again, I can show you. I give you this personal experience, like how it is with having a Sega 2X. So let's take a close look at the gameplay. Okay, I briefly want to talk about the boxes. So I don't own a Sega 32X original box, but they are basically the same like this one from the so Sonic and Knuckles. And one thing is like for sure, like you need to get yourself a box protector because these things are like flimsy cardboard. In the past, I did own one, it's a very long time ago, but you can see like this thing is going to be like completely bust up. So if you're going to pay a shitload of money for this, in my opinion, it doesn't make any sense anymore because these boxes are so very low quality that you're going to find none of them like in mint condition. If you find it, you need to pay the big price for it. All right, so in my previous video, I did get some replies that people wanted to see this stuff on an old school CRT. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm hooking it up to my Bang & Olufsen MX4000. And no, it's not a Terminator or something from the future. It's just a pretty damn awesome television with an amazing sound. So that's what we're going to play on today. We're going to do it old school style with a CRT. Okay, but how does this work? It's quite simple. We're turning it on without a game insert. We're going to boot up to the Mega CD or Sega CD, depending on the region. So if you want to play a game, what we're going to do actually is like putting in the game itself in the cartridge and turning it on. So let's see if it's going to boot up. Yep, it's booting up. Did it clean the game before? So I was curious if it's even going to boot it up. And there we have it. There we're going to see that we're going to play some Sega 2 weeks. But then it's the question, can we still play some original games? Okay, so first uh, let's put in a game, an original Sonic 3 game. And here you can see it boots up like normal, so that is pretty damn awesome. But whatever, if we're going to like extend this power of tower, we're going to put the Knuckles cartridge in. We're going to even plug in another game, so we're going to get a real big tower. Turn it on, and as you can see it boot up. Let's see if it's going to see the original cartridge, because sometimes it doesn't see the Knuckle cartridge anymore. And I can see it from the intro, it works like a charm. Alright guys, so let's boot up the game. So we're going to get the option for the 2D2 Wix. This is a special enhanced Star Wars experience and we're going to get the arcade. I muted the music because we're going to get the original music. And it's going to be copyright strike to the maximum level. Then we're going to get here the option to choose or different kind of way you want to play. Pilot or pilot and gunner. Hmm, just choose the pilot. In the end it's like pretty damn awesome. It looks very well. So the polygon, I'm still getting this Star Wing vibe. Okay, so let's play. Okay, what we're going to get is we have the option to look on characters and enemies. Here you can see like we're having different view angles, quite interesting. And the game, I must say, I'm very I clever guess about this. It looks very nice. The gameplay looks really smooth. And you need to take consideration, like of course the Sega Saturn was already out, so if they ported this game to the Sega Saturn, it looks way better. But for this extension, the idea is pretty damn awesome. All right, so let's go. Let's try the arcade just to see what happens. Let's get the other view angle that plays way better. Caution, tie bind. I'm going to destroy them all. I will drop the bomb on you. Here, you got the bomb. Nothing happens, but yeah. Oh yeah, let's quick up the value. All right, so let's see how the experience is of the Doom game. I have seen some shitty ports, and I think the 32 weeks is not the most horrible one. Still going to get this window, a little bit of a bummer. Think about if you spend like a shitload of money on the 32 weeks, and you're going to get this. It's not all that bad, but... I can personally really enjoy it, so before making this video, I played this game for quite a long time. I'm a big Doom fan, especially the classic one. Shoot and run, shoot and run! Yep. Get to the secret. 
Okay, so a lot of people told me this game is pretty damn awful. The motocross championship. So let's see how bad this thing is. Okay, let's start with practice because I'm not going to play the actual game. Alright, so here we're going to get different kind of bikes. Let's start with on 25cc. Oh yeah, this looks really bad. <laughs> oh, I can even hit somebody. It looks like road rash. Oh yeah, indeed. This is really awful. Okay, so then we're going to get time attack. We can even play it with two players. Record and options. Let's try virtual racing. Formula. We're going to get stock cars and prototype. Different tracks. Don't you love those old school 22 bit X sounds? It even got some awesome soundtrack to it. See, even got some. <laughs> oh, the, the effects of this, like when you're basically bashing the metal into the. To the road, you can see like this happening, like what the hell. But still a really cool achievement when you're looking back at the day. Okay, there's one thing I just wanted to try. So with my Mega Drive 1 setup, I do have some issues that I cannot play all of my Mega Drive game of Mega CD games. It's kind of weird in my opinion. So the game that didn't work with my previous setup was Final Fight CD. So what basically was happening is that we could play it, it boots up, but I did only hear some audio. So then we're going to try out, just see what happens now. Let's boot it up. And let's see what we're going to get. Do we actually going to get all the things that we're needing? It's like an image and freaking audio to play my Final Fight CD. Or is it just a general issue with the 2 x Ah, now I'm going to get myself the image. Another game I had issues with was Wolf Child, but it seems to be working just fine. I know, just punch me in the balls. That's the way that this game needs to be played. Ooh, I am the bunch ball, the ball puncher. Ooh. So this game got some amazing soundtracks. Oh yeah, Beefcake turning Wolfie. Ooh. Ooh. All right guys, so that concludes this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. So. Finding a 32 weeks is like a freaking nightmare if you ask me, simply because finding a right one that fits on your machine that has a great compatibility, I'm very pleased that I finally got one that has like a great compatibility with Mega CD but also with all the games. But yeah, another problem that I'm having with these devices nowadays, like they're absolutely crazy expensive. If you think Sega CD was expensive, 32 weeks is like the next level. And in my opinion, it doesn't make any sense because it's more like a novelty nowadays. It doesn't have like an amazing great library of games. And some games like Knuckle Geodex that are like freaking awesome, they are like so expensive. That makes again no sense. But well, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell. And thank you to my patrons for supporting me every single month or I'm making this dream possible to make videos for you here. And it will be great to see you in the next video. So consider subscribing, hit the little bell. And we'll see you in the next video.